Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting bubblegum giraffe and I'm sipping on some elderberry tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt sienna, which I like to call rust, fluorescent pink, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, <laughs> green oxide. We have raw sienna, which I'll probably call yellow, <laughs> <laughs> Mars black. So you can call them whatever you would like and you can certainly switch up the colors but this is what I'll be using. Uh, for my tools today I have a seven inch paper plate that we'll be using for um, drawing a circle. I have a standard number two pencil that we'll use for some sketching and then I have two brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush and a number six round synthetic brush. I will refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process and of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint. I'll even throw in the fancy paper plate for you, so that's all there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are green and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself like a nice soft green color that I'll be using up at the top, and then I'm gonna fade it down to a very light pale green down at the bottom. So what I've done, I've pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed. I've used my green oxide and I'm just adding a little bit of white to it. You don't need to add a lot of white um, just add it slowly because the green will turn light really, really quick. And this is about where I'm headed with mine. You can certainly make yours lighter or darker. You could even, if you wanted to change the hue of it, you could add a touch of yellow or a touch of brown. So you can certainly have fun with making that the color that you want. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up at the top of my canvas using a left to right brush stroke to um, color in a top portion. And then as I come down my canvas, I'm going to blend it into a lighter color. So right now, I'm gonna pick up my uh, pre-mixed green plus white on my brush. So I have both of those colors on my brush and on my arm. <laughs> it just flung on my arm. And I'm gonna get these two sections to kind of blend in with one another. And then the next time I go to pick up paint, I'm only gonna be picking up white and I'm not going to wash my brush. So what'll happen is the remnants of the green that are on my brush will slowly work their way off and it'll get lighter and lighter as I come down my canvas. If yours goes too light too quick for you, you could certainly add back more of that green onto your brush. That's gonna be a visual personal preference on your part. I don't necessarily want mine to go all the way white down at the bottom. So if I do come to a point where I'm like, hmm, it's almost too, too light for me, then I would definitely um, pick up a tiny bit more green. But as I'm coming down, what I'm doing is I'm pushing my brush into my canvas and that kind of pushes out any of the that remnants of the green that is kind of hiding or residing within my bristles. So that's just a little 
um, technical trick that I do. But again, if yours goes too light on you and you want to add any more of the green back into it, feel free to do so. You can also paint the edges or the sides of your canvas as you go along. That'll make for the, the painting to look nice and complete and as if you have paid enough attention or the same amount of attention to the outside of your canvas as you did to the inside. And then when I've got it all applied, then I just kind of go back and forth as the paint is drying just to make sure that I have it well blended and that my thickness of paint is pretty consistent throughout the entire canvas. So that way it'll dry evenly for me and I won't necessarily have too many um, paint strokes, visible paint strokes, if I have a nice consistent um, thickness to the paint. And then once I've got this done, I will be utilizing my chalk, or excuse me, my pencil for the next step. So you can just finish up your background. If you feel like you want to do a second coat, feel free to do so, and then just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to draw an outline for our giraffe and the bubble. I'm going to be using my pencil. I do want to recommend though that before you start the step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and, and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So whatever works for you. I'm going to use my pencil. I'm going to, um, oh, and my paper plate. So I'm going to guide you through a series of marks. We'll connect those marks and hopefully by the time we're done we'll have something that will resemble the shape of a giraffe's head and a bubble. So I'm going to start with my circle. This is going to be represent the bubble. So I'm going to have mine kind of a little to the right of the center and a little bit to the down from the center of the um, canvas. So I'm going to place mine, I would say somewhere around here. So this is about uh, two and a half to three inches away from the right hand side and away from the bottom. The, the left hand side, if this is the center of my canvas, I'm a little to the left of that. So somewhere in that vicinity. And then I'm just going to draw myself a circle right around the paper plate. And then you can discard the paper plate wherever you'd like to. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, draw the bottom right hand side of the neck. So I'm going to find the bottom of my circle and I'm going to go to the right of that, maybe about an inch and a half somewhere in through here, make myself a mark. And then on the bottom right of my canvas, I'm gonna come down here, make myself a little bit of a mark. And then I'm just gonna connect those two with a little bit of a wavy type of a line. This is gonna represent the side of the neck. So something like that. Then I'm going to, on the left-hand side, I will also make the um, side of the neck, but this is kind of a little bit more of a floating line because it's gonna to be to the left of here it's going to meet in where the face is as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, if this is up and down the, the farthest part of my circle here, I'm going to come up about an inch and a half, make myself a marker, and then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a curved line up in through here. So this is about the same height of the top of my circle, like that. Now I'm going to connect here to a mark that I'm going to make down here. This mark here is almost dead center bottom of my canvas left to right about the center i'm going to connect these this is going to be the side of the the left side of the neck so you're going to want to give a, a nice kind of curved line in through here doesn't have to be perfect you can see mine has a little bit of wobble to it that's going to make it look a little bit more natural now what we're going to do is put a basic shape on the head itself so i'm going to come about halfway or actually I'm going to, at the top of my circle, I'm going to make a, a marker right in through here. Then I'm going to come about halfway between here and here, so somewhere in through here. And then I'm going to make myself a mark about um, almost halfway between here and the top of my canvas. So somewhere about here is where I'm going to make my next marker. I'm going to connect here to here and here to here with the top kind of skull portion of the um, giraffe. It's going to come out a little bit further in this corner and in this corner for like the eye socket parts. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to curve it around in through here and then just curve it back in towards this marker like this. And then same thing over on this side. I'm going to bring it out in this curved type of line. This is going to be a little bit farther out to the left than that. And then I just curve it back right into this line. This will be a continual line going into the jaw. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself some horns. So I'm going to go up from here, maybe, maybe go to the left of that a little bit and maybe up about an inch, inch and a half. Give yourself a little bit of a curved kind of line in through here. Then I'm going to go to the right of this marker. I would say about two, two and a half inches or somewhere in this vicinity and do the same thing on the left hand side. So something around this vicinity. They don't have to be perfect. Our head is a little bit tipped and crooked so the space between here doesn't have to be perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself the tops of my horns. So somewhere between here and here, just travel up towards the top of the canvas about an inch away make yourself a mark between these two this one and this one somewhere in the middle travel up about an inch inch and a half away from the end and now we're going to connect our dots so we can connect this this is going to be the outside of the left horn you can give it a little bit of shape this is going to be the inside of the top horn give it a little bit of shape from here this is going to be the inside of this one give it a little bit of shape and then over here this is going to be, so I've got them a little bit more bubbly at the top and then they go ahead and they meet inside there. Now I just need to make myself a couple of ears. So I'm going to have, um, and again, my head's going to be a little bit tipped, so they'll be a little bit in, in different positions. So from here, I'm going to come down maybe about an inch, inch and a half. This is going to be the bottom portion of the ear. And then I'm just going to have the top portion coming in through here. I'm going to make the tip of it somewhere out in through here. And then I'm just going to connect it with some nice kind of wavy, lines with a little point at the top. This will give me a nice shape to the ear and then I'll do the same thing over here. So this one again my head's going to be a little tipped so I'm actually going to have this ear kind of we're going to see a little bit of the side of the um, connector part of the ear somewhere through there and then down here I'm going to make start it right in through here. The tip of my ear is going to come way out over here so this is almost at the same height as this and it's just about maybe an inch, inch and a half away from the edge of my canvas and then I'm just going to connect them again with kind of a curved line. This will be my point of my ear and then just kind of come in through here and that's all I'm going to be doing for that step. We are going to be using our large paintbrush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our giraffe and for our bubble. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are brown, yellow, pink, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a tan color for my giraffe and I'll be doing a light pink color for my bubble. I'm gonna do my tan first because that's the one that I'm gonna color in first. So I have pre-mixed myself my tan color so you can see where I'm headed. How I got there was I used some of my yellow, a little bit of brown, and then a little bit of white. I don't need this to be a perfect color uh, but I do want it to be just a nice neutral tan type of color so I um, have a good base when I go to color in the giraffe and it's nice and natural looking. If it was a little bit too yellow or a little bit too brown, it might look a little bit less natural. So I'm just going for something nice middle of the road tan type of color. Once I've got the color that I desire, I'm just going to paint in the whole thing. I don't need to do anything special, just bring that color right up to the edge of my pencil. If you miss, um, you know, misfire and it goes inside or outside your pencil mark and you need to do any adjusting, don't worry about it. The, the shape doesn't have to be exactly as mine and we're going to be doing a lot of other details um, later so don't fear the, um, the if yours doesn't come out perfect at this point. Even if your paint is a little bit streaky or anything like that, it's okay. This is just the base coat. It will um, it'll all work itself out in the end. So I'm going over all of my lines, even where like the face met the ear in through here. We'll be able to re-identify that when we go to um, when we go to color in the details. So just going all the way to the edge here. And if you wanted to, you could certainly use a smaller brush. I'm just going for this uh, this type of brush because I know that the brush stroke at this point doesn't really matter. I'm just going for something that. Um, has this base coat. I am going to leave the, a little bit of this line in through here um, evidence so I don't 
I, I want to make sure I don't lose that where I want that chin to go or the side of the face. So that's an area that I would say maybe keep a little bit of your pencil mark showing so you can, um, so you don't lose that. Your paint might be see-through, um, which means you could, in essence, kind of paint over that line and you'd still see it. But for me, for safety purposes, I'm just gonna kind of leave it showing so I don't um, forget where I wanted that particular line. And then as you get towards the bubble, I am going right up to it. You can even bump into it a little bit with your color. Um, that's gonna be okay when we go to paint the base coat of the bubble, we can clean up that edge also. So that's that's fine. I'm doing the, um, the animal first for that precise reason. So when I do go to paint the base coat of the bubble, I can clean up that line because the the animal is behind the bubble. So that makes sense to do it in that particular order. And I'm just, again, bringing this all the way to the edge. If you go over your pencil, that's fine. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfectly even coat. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pre-mix myself a light pink color. So I'm just washing and drying my brush. My light pink color is going to be made up of my fluorescent pink white and a little bit of brown. So I've already pre-mixed it in through here. So what I've done is I've just taken a little bit of white paint, mixed it in with my pink, maybe we need a, a little bit more than that, mixed it in and just a tiny touch of the brown. The brown is gonna help neutralize it so it's not super um, out of this world pink. It'll just kind of bring it into kind of a softer tone which resembles bubble gum to me, <laughs> but maybe you want your bubble gum to be a, of a different shade of pink. But once you've got it there, you're just gonna paint in this whole area with a flat color. We don't need to do anything special to it right now. Even your edges don't have to be super clean. I just am gonna um, do a, you know, just a, a basic coat around here. And if your bubble morphs and becomes not perfectly round by the time this is done, that's fine because bubbles don't have to, bubble gum bubbles do not have to be perfectly round because they take on some unusual shapes when they're being blown. So if yours takes on a little bit of warpiness around the edges, just roll with it. It can be, it can have a fun shape to it. It can even be totally not circular. It can be a weird ovaly type shape too. And then what we're going to do is we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put the large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some cute eyes. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, yellow, rust, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them in place first and then we'll make some little details around them. I'm gonna be putting them in place with black paint. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually thin out my black paint a little bit so it's kind of like an ink consistency so it's nice and thin and it'll dry pretty fast for me. Black covers really well so even if it's on the thinner side it will um it will give you some good coverage to to start so i'm gonna have my um giraffe is turned a little bit so i'm gonna have the eye on the right is gonna kind of be right up to the edge of the face it's even gonna hang over a little bit and then the one on the left is gonna be in a little bit so if this is about the center of my face somewhere in through here we've kind of given these eye um, socket bumps up in through here. The eye itself is gonna be just kind of below that. And I'm gonna have a kind of equal distance away from like the center of my head. So my center is maybe a little bit to the right. So I'm gonna start with this one over on the right hand side. I'm gonna make myself a curved line up on this top side like this. And then I'm gonna make myself a little curved line at the bottom. I'm gonna have this eyeball pop out of the head a little bit. So I'm actually gonna bring it out from my original footprint a little bit so it looks like it, we're seeing um, the side of it. And then I'll give myself a little kind of a piece of skin underneath there. And then I'm just gonna color this in with black paint. And again, I have thin black paint on my brush so with a little bit of water so it'll 
um, dry pretty darn fast and you can make this little inside corner with soft edges. None of this has to be firm lines. I like to do soft edges when I'm doing um, eyes and animals and things of that nature. So the next one I'm going to have in this vicinity over here. So um, it's close to the edge of the head. So some, somewhere in through here is where I'm going to start that inside little corner to it. And then I'm just going to kind of bring it up in a similar curve to what I did on the other side. This one I'm going to have eyelashes, or they both have eyelashes, but this one will um, be stretched out pretty far. But the other, the left hand side is going to come in from the edge of the face a little bit. So maybe about a half of an inch or so. And then I'm going to get this to just kind of give myself this curved line in through here color this in with, with my thin black paint. I, again, don't have a lot of paint on my brush, nice and thin, so it will dry pretty darn quickly. The, um, the giraffes have beautiful eyelashes that we'll put in place in a minute. So right now I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, a little bit more black plus a touch of white paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a little bit of um, kind of a highlight on the skin part below the eye itself. So I have black plus a little bit of white on my brush. I'm just going to give myself like a little gray type of um, area for the skin part. Maybe a little bit in the corner of the eye in through here. I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side. So I have black plus white on my brush. Maybe a little bit more white just to give myself a little bit more of a highlight. But this is going to allow us to have a um, the appearance of the of a little skin part underneath that eye, maybe a little bit in through here. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put the colored parts on the eye. So I'm going to be using burnt sienna or rust and I'm going to give myself a nice colored part over here on the exterior edge of the eye. You don't have to bring it all the way in. You can make it look nice and soft. It doesn't have to be um, a firm kind of line. I'm just kind of giving a streak of color. Not at the on this side. I'm not going all the way to the edge. I'm just going to kind of bring it in a little bit like this and just pull it up. Now I'm going to pick up some of my yellow without washing my brush and do another another little streak on top of that colored part. So that yellow will almost look like a highlight within that colored part of the eye. Something like that and just a little kind of streak. In, in there and it'll turn a little bit darker as it dries because of that black that it sits on. I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put a little um, twinkly highlight. So I'm going to put a little bit of black and white on my brush at the same time. So I in essence kind of have like a grayish color. I'm going to do a little bit of a highlight up at the top of the eye in through here. I'm going to do the same thing in through here. And now I'm picking up just white. Going to give myself a little sparkle within that gray area, a little sparkle within that gray area. And now I'm going to add some eyelashes. So I'm washing and drying my brush. And I'm going to do my eyelashes. I'm going to start with just a little bit of my watered down black paint. I'm going to have some pretty eyelashes coming out of the top of this eye in through here. And you can have them as long as you want. You can have them as full as you want. I'm just kind of bringing a few out in through this direction. I'll also have a couple coming down. The um, giraffes that I was looking at had little bottom eyelashes too, which I thought was super cute. So I'm definitely going to incorporate those. I'm going to do the same thing over on this left eye. So I'm going to pull some eyelashes out in through here. And the water on your brush will help to make these skinnier kind of more fluid lines. But if you're finding yourself having a little bit of difficulty with that, you could certainly use a smaller brush. Um, I'm having some of these kind of come down in through here, maybe cross over the eye a little bit. I'm going to put a couple of my tiny ones down in through here. And then if you get done your eyelashes and you feel like you want a little bit more dimension on them, you can certainly add a tiny bit of white paint to your brush. So I just added a teeny tiny bit of white paint. This will give you little individual strands throughout the eyelashes themselves. You don't really want to go overboard, but if you did find that you wanted to have um, the appearance of not just black lines, but a little bit more um, information, you could certainly add a touch of white paint um, into the equation and that'll make it look like you've got um, a little bit more dimension. And then you just, just kind of keep fiddling however much that you want. And we are going to be utilizing this same brush 
for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful eyes done, you can, oh no, we're gonna use our large brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the shadow areas on our giraffe and any other little dark areas, like there'll be dark areas at the top of the ears. There'll be dark areas on the face. So I'm gonna paint all the dark areas right now. This will not include the markings on the net, the, um, the patterned markings, but it'll include the contour shadows. So I'm gonna be using my large brush. The colors I'm, I'm using are black, brown, and my original tan color if I need to do any additional blending. So where I'm gonna be putting this is I'm gonna have dark spots in the ears. I'll have them at the top of the horns, a little bit at the top of the head, down the sides of the, um, where the nose kind of is, and underneath my, um, my bubble in through here. So I'm gonna start with a very tiny bit of black and brown on my brush. I do not need a lot, just a teeny tiny bit on the tip of my brush. You can even kind of tap it off on your paper towel if you feel that you might have too much. I'm gonna just kind of tap it in towards the top of my horns in through here. We're gonna be putting a lot more texture and stuff on them, but this is just gonna start that little dark fluffy area at the top of the of the horns and just make it fluffy. It doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, just make it nice and organic looking. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit inside the ears. So I'm just gonna kind of rub in a little dark area inside the ears. These will be, um, the majority of your ears are gonna be covered by the, um, by the headphones. So don't feel that if this doesn't go perfect that, you know, that it's bad because we're gonna be covering them up most of the way anyways. I'm gonna put a little bit at the top of the head as well. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more brown so the black doesn't overwhelm it. So just a little bit more brown, something like this. And you can even just kind of rub it out so it um, blends in a little bit with that tan color next to it. I'm also gonna put some on the sides of the nose. So in order to kind of figure out where that is, you can just kind of come inside where this little corner is a little bit, and then just kind of, I hardly have any paint on my brush, just an FYI, um, so you can see how little bit of paint that I have that's gonna provide me with the, um, the darkness that I want. And I'm just kind of rubbing it in like a little dry brush type of technique, bringing it, you can bring it right to that, um, the bubble in through there so that's going to provide you with a little bit more information i'm giving these little quick kind of curves here maybe a little curve up at the top we'll be doing more details in a little while but this is just going to kind of get us started now what i'm going to do i'm going to pick up more brown on my brush and make sure that i have it wiped off on my paper towel i'm going to put the shadow underneath my bubble so this is one of and underneath this jaw this is one of those um steps that you might want to add a little bit of moisture to your brush. So if you take your brush and just kind of dip it a little bit in your water and then tap it on your paper towel, this will put a little bit more moisture within your brush without getting that, that paint too wet. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm going to kind of just scoop my brush inside this little crevice in through here and then I rub it out into the neighboring paint. I am in a second going to pick up my original tan um, color so I can get them to blend in but right now I'm just kind of providing myself with a nice shadow underneath here. I'm going to pick up my tan color now to get it to blend in and you can certainly adjust this as much as you want to if you feel that you want it lighter or darker or have a little bit more brown in it or a little bit more black in it. It's gonna to be totally up to you. And then just kind of keep fiddling with it as much as you want. Make any little adjustments that you feel are necessary. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so now what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put the highlight areas on the head and the neck. 
this again is not going to be the markings or the little fine-tuned details we're just kind of giving ourselves the the um the shape of the animal and then we'll put all the fun details on in a little bit so i'm going to use my large bristle brush again the colors i'm going to use this time are going to be white and my base tan color again so i'm going to start with a little bit of white paint on my brush i'm going to start up at the top i'm going to leave my horns and the top of my head in through here for a future step we're going to be putting lots of different colors on those so we're going to be util we'll do that in a little while so i've got a little bit of white on my brush i'm going to put some white on the top of my ears in through here a little bit of white in through here while i have this on my brush i'm going to put a little bit on top of the eyes oops i went in in my eye a little bit something like this this will be like that eye brow area or the eye bone area going to do the same thing over here on the top of my ears i will be putting a little bit of my tan in a minute too this is just kind of getting me started here going to put this up in through here so this is giving me the shape to the um, eye socket kind of areas and if you feel like you go too white on it don't worry we're going to be um, again doing another step that will help to add some additional detail i'm going to use the remnants of that white that i have on my brush right now to put some lighter area in the cheek in through here and underneath the eyes so something like this and just kind of rubbing in this white i'm going to pick up a tiny bit of my tan color right now on my dirty brush just to get this to blend in a little bit more i don't need it to be anything fancy just kind of giving myself making sure that it blends in pretty well and i can do the same thing on those ears so just picked up a little bit of that tan color making sure that i've got as well of a blend as i want and again the ears are going to be predominantly covered by <laughs> those headphones so don't worry about those being perfect just getting something on there is going to help to sell the story so now i'm going to do um, the same thing on the neck so i'm going to pick up a, i'm not washing my brush i'm just going to pick up a little bit of white paint and i'm going to put it over on this right hand side something like this just to get that edge to be nice and light now i'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel i'm going to pick up some of that tan color the original tan and just get it to blend in so this is going to provide great form to the um, shape of the neck and the body and then when we go to put those um, the design elements on it it will really look nice and natural and then i just keep wiping my brush off on my paper towel and then i'm just going to kind of scrub it to get it to blend into that neighboring shadowy area and if you feel like you need to um, revamp your shadowy area you can certainly pick up a little bit of extra brown or anything else that you need to get these to blend in as much as you want and then we are going to be utilizing um, we're going to utilize this no yep <laughs> we're going to use uh, we're going to go to the small brush for the next step so you can wash or put this large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the head portion of our giraffe, except for the little patterned markings. We're going to be doing that in a separate step. So I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using rust brown yellow and probably some white too so really what i'm looking to do is just kind of finish up the fur and the details on this nose muzzle area this forehead area and the horns the um i've discovered that giraffe foreheads can come in a wide variety <laughs> of styles so some have like a really big bump on them some have longer fur some have different colors so i'm just going to go for a nice generic type of um it'll look a little round with the different colors but i'm not going to go for a huge like bumpy thing so i'm going to be putting my rust and brown all and the yellow all throughout this mid area we're going to put some wrinkly details around the eye sockets and then we'll also be finishing up the horns with some nice textured fur so i'm going to start with a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow on my brush at the same time and I'm going to be just kind of rubbing this into this nose area. So I'm not using um, a textured type of brush stroke. I'm just kind of rubbing it in so I can intermingle this color throughout 
the um, throughout the face. I'm even overlapping where I had that black intermingled. I'm going to do the same color combination up in the um, up in the horns. So rust plus a little bit of the yellow, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of rub this in them as well. I do want them to look like they've got a little bit of fluff on them so you can get those edges to be not super straight just kind of wiggle your brush a little bit and that'll give you what appears to be soft edges on the left and the right and then I, I like to just kind of blend it out or just rub it out so that way it looks like it's just kind of blending into the um, the rest of the head so it's not just a distinct section of color. I'm going to finish this this one up here again I've got the rust plus a little bit of the yellow on my brush and just kind of rubbing it into the um, into the section that I'm in and bringing it all the way up into the the top of the horn. I'm also going to put some of this burnt sienna on the this top area in through here. My burnt sienna is a little bit translucent, so it will detect that darker color that we had put underneath. So I'm utilizing that to my advantage. And then I'm just gonna kind of put a little rough edge up there to give it a little bit of structure. Picking up a little bit of brown with my dirty brush, I'm gonna um, just kind of get these colors to intermingle a little bit. So I'm doing that with the brown on my brush. It's okay if you have these little light spots. That's why we have the light um, color underneath so you can have this diversity in your tones as you're going through this process. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, give myself some information around these eyes. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown paint and I'm going to give myself almost these little wrinkly areas around the eyes. Again, this is one of those um, steps that you could certainly go more um, involved than I'm doing but I'm really just having fun with mine I'm not necessarily needing it to look like a photograph I'm just trying to um, incorporate some of the elements that I was seeing um, when I was looking at these cute little creatures <laughs> in my in my studies I've got this little portion of this ear that um, I want to just kind of make sure it translates I guess as a little bit different than the head itself um, and maybe I think I'm picking up, a, I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, brown plus a tiny bit of black. I want to just make sure that I have the top of this eye socket is um, uh, different than the ear itself. So I just picked up a little bit of darkness to get that to happen. Also, while I have the black on my brush, maybe I'll put a little bit more creases in these um, little curved wrinkles in through here. And you can certainly get them to get soft and um, kind of work into the little corners of the eyes. Just have fun with it. It's, you know, there's no science to this. It's just whatever is visually appealing to you and making sure that everything kind of works together. I'm going to put a little highlight up at the top of my um, horns. So I'm going to use yellow um, plus my tan color. So I have yellow plus my tan color. I'm going to just kind of tap this in to give myself a little bit of a highlighted area towards the top of the um, of the horns. So this is the yellow plus my tan and I'm tapping it so it looks like it's got some texture and I'm also going to put a little bit up at the um, at, like there's little pieces of hair at the top. So I have tan and I picked up a little bit of brown on my brush. I'm putting some little pieces of hair up at the top of this um, horn, kind of intermingled with that black area that we did. And again, you could have yours lighter or darker. I might put a little lightness on it in a second by just kind of pulling up these little fun fuzzy pieces. I am going to put a little bit more yellow and my tan on there so I can have a couple little brighter pieces popping out in through here and you don't have to do much that one was a little bit extra but we can we'll just let it ride and he'll have that extra little bright spot and then I would just kind of keep fiddling so I might step back um, let this dry for a minute step back make sure everything kind of blends in with one another I'm picking up a little bit more brown right now because I feel like this area in through here could use a little bit more 
finessing and um, blending of sorts, maybe a little bit more um, darkness in this forehead. So you can certainly, this is just brown on my brush right now, you can certainly just kind of keep fiddling with it and making the areas darker or lighter or having more texture or more wrinkles. You feel free to steer it in whatever um, direction that you want. If you want this area to pop out a little bit more, just put a little dark section on the ears next to it. Um, and then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can uh, wash. Oops, I just picked a pink by accident. That was that wasn't what I was when I wanted brown. <laughs> um, you can just wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the pattern on our giraffe. So this is the, the iconic markings that the giraffes have. Again, they can come in a variety of different shades. They can come in a variety of different organized patterns versus unorganized patterns. You can put the markings on the head or on the cheeks or on the obviously on the neck. They can be big, they can be small. So well, you can watch what I do and then you can make your own decision if you want to do them in the same pattern as mine or switch it up a bit. So I'm going to put just a few on the cheek and then I'm going to have some nice large ones coming down the neck. I'm going to have um, the cheek ones are going to be uh, just rust and brown and so are the ones on the neck but I'm gonna have more brown ones in this area in through here and then I'm gonna kind of transition into rust colored ones over here so it almost looks like they're shadowed over here and then getting into the light over there because I am using a student grade paint it tends to be a little bit on the translucent side which means it's going to show or have the the color underneath will have an effect on my paint it will make it a little bit darker over here and lighter over here based on whatever colors underneath. If yours does not work out that way, you can certainly do multiple layers and you can also um, either, you could put a little bit of water or a little bit of liquid medium in your paint to make it thinner to do that effect. So I'm gonna be using rust and brown on my brush and if I need to, I'll use a little bit of water as well in order to get my paint to thin out and spread around a little bit. I have rust on my brush right now, and really what I'm gonna be doing is just kind of a chaotic display of different organic type of shapes within the fur. So I've just kind of moving that paint around, so I have some sort of shape in through there. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown paint right now without washing my brush. Maybe I have uh, one of these markings coming out from underneath the the bubble. Maybe I've got another one in through here. So I have a little bit of water on my brush right now so my my markings aren't too um, too bold. I just put a, picked up a little bit more rust. So that's about all I'm going to be doing on the face. You could even maybe put one or two over on this right hand side if you wanted to just kind of keep it the symmetry um, working well. Now I'm going to just pick up some brown paint without washing my brush and I'm going to start making some marks coming down my, um, my neck. So I definitely want it to be evident. So if I need to add more darkness to it, then so be it. If I Even in these areas and through here, if yours is super dark from your shadow, you could certainly add a little bit of black to these markings. That would make it... Um, definitely show as if it's in in the shadows. I'm going to put this kind of organic type of shape in through here. You want some of your marks to also wrap around the um, neck, so definitely bring the, uh, some of them to the edge of that, um, of that neck, so that will make sure it has, you know, tells the viewer that the, that the Neck, neck kind of wraps around and that color transcends over onto the other side as well. I'm put another one in through here. And again, I'm not concerned about my edges of my bubble right now because I know that I have another step onto, on that that will allow me to correct any kind of edges that might have gone awry. Still just picking up my brown right now. Um, I'll start picking up the rust in a little bit, but right now just kind of picking this up. You can have whatever kind of spacing that you want in between these um, 
these marks and then I'm just kind of rubbing it in. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of rust for this one. I feel like I'm going into the, you know, I'm starting to transition into some lighter areas. So I picked up a little bit of the rust, bringing it all the way down the edge of the body and just making sure that these colors kind of blend in and mix well together. Then maybe I'm going to put We'll just put a big one in through here. And again, I'm not at this point washing my brush, so I'm just allowing these colors to just kind of mix in with one another as I'm coming over towards this lighter area of the animal. My color will get lighter and lighter, especially if I just start rubbing it in like I'm doing now. So it allows for that color to be shown underneath. I'm going to put a nice big one down in through here. And again, make your color pattern whatever you want. This is the fun part about doing one of these kind of animals. You get to customize it whatever way that you want. And put another uh, rusty colored one in through here. And then I've just got maybe just a couple more I'll put on the edge. And I, after you're done doing this, if you if there is any areas that you feel that you um, want to, you could even put texture on these um, on these markings. You could have them look like they have some soft fur to them. Um, you could do that with another layer, even maybe a layer of your lighter tan color just to give them a little bit of texture to it. But that's, again, just going to be a personal thing on your part. I'm going to have maybe one in through here. Maybe this one's going to be a little skinnier and curved. If you have any with curved edges, like this one has a curved edge, that will help the viewer also understand that this is a, a round or a, an object that has some sort of form to it. So that will help to steer the viewer into understanding the shape of the body. And then once I've got this done, I am going to be uh, utilizing this same brush for the next step. So you can just what or no, actually, we're going to go to our large brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our bubble. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are white, my pre-made light pink, and brown. And maybe the regular pink too. <laughs> so what I'm in essence gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a darker pink color so I can do like a shadow around the bubble, and then we'll be using white to put the highlight and give it some form and dimension. But I'm gonna use my light pink in the mix as well. So what I've done is I've taken my light pink that I had pre-mixed. Here's where I'm headed for my dark color. How I got there was I utilized a little bit more of my bright pink plus a tiny bit of brown to in essence kind of darken up the light pink color that I had. And you can make it as dark as you want. You can be as bold as you want. Um, I'm just going for maybe something that's a couple of shades darker than what I had originally um, used. And then that way at, I'm gonna utilize this as my shadow type of color. So here we go, we've got this color in through here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my brush off on the side of my palette. I'm going to utilize that as my shadowy color around the edges. You want to be careful that you don't have too, too much paint on your brush because you don't want to darken the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in essence, kind of take this darker shade of pink and I'm going to utilize it around the edges of my, of my bubble. It doesn't have to go all the way around the circle. I'm going to bring it up this right hand side. Um, a little bit, make sure I go all the way to my pencil. I got a little bit in my pink or my sky. Um, and then I'm going to bring it all the way over to here. I'm going to, once I've got this on here, I don't want the um, bubble to go too, too dark on me. So I'm actually going to, because I feel like I have too much paint on my brush right now, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and pick up some of my light pink color to get this shadowy area to blend in. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm picking up some of my original light pink just to get these two colors to blend into one another. You might have found that you had the right amount of paint on your brush and you didn't need to um, wash it and dry it, but I felt like I had 
too much, um, which happened because I mixed my paint with my with the same brush I was using, so I had an overabundance of it on my brush. Oops, my bubble just grew it there too. <laughs> I keep making my bubble grow on the right hand side, which is okay. Um, and then once I've got that mixed in pretty good, that's that's looking um, pretty good to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up white paint without washing my brush. So I just picked up some white paint. I want the top of my bubble, the top and like in through here to be the lightest to um, kind of give the viewer the information as to where the light source is coming from. So I get the light paint on there. I didn't wash my brush so it's just really turning into a light pink at this point. And then I'm going to start just kind of blending it around. You can have a darker spot kind of almost in the middle of your bubble. I was noticing during my bubble, my, my bubble research <laughs> that sometimes the center of them looks a little dark because of their, because of their translucency and because they are um, being blown from a dark spot, which would have been the, the person's mouth. So it appeared that there was little darkness in the center of the bubbles that I was researching. So if yours goes a little bit darker in the middle like that, great. That's going to make it look more natural. And then I'm just kind of rubbing this around. I'm going to add a little bit more brightness um, to that top area in a second. I'm just kind of softly blending this in. I'm going to add a little bit more white paint to my brush right now to give myself an even brighter highlight right about in through here. So I'm going to add that white onto my brush. I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and softly just blend it out. So this way I have kind of a concentrated bright area. You might find that you it's gonna it could take you a couple of different layers to accomplish this. Um, if you don't get it on the first layer, just let it dry. You can come back in and do a second shot. And then once you've got it all done, we are going to be switching brushes to our small brush. So you can fiddle with your bubble as much as you want, get this contrast to be as dramatic or as soft as you want, and then you can put this large brush away. I have a little bristle that's driving me crazy here. You can put the large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the headphones. I'm going to use my small brush. The colors I'm going to use are black and white. You could certainly make yours any color that you'd like, but that's what I'm going to go for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be um, starting off with a little bit of watered down black paint or thinned out black paint. So again, just taking a couple of droplets of water and giving myself this nice thin consistency so I can have some nice clean lines and I can make these shapes in the in the way that I want to. You could certainly pencil in your um, your headphones if you want to to make sure that you've gotten the shape that you want but I'm just going to kind of um, guide you through the shapes that I have on mine. So I'm going to have mine obviously covering up the holes in the ears <laughs> and I'm going to have them I would say about like this big maybe three inches tall they're going to be a little bit of a curved type of shape um, earphones can come in all different kinds of shapes so you can certainly do whatever you'd like for yours so I'm going to have um, I'm just going to kind of give myself this little bit of a curved type of line coming down it close to the eye, I would say somewhere in through here. And then I'm just gonna cur um, give the, the top and the bottom a little bit of a curve as well, and then just kind of bring it back in this direction. And again, you can have yours in whatever shape that you want. I'm gonna just kind of color it in as I'm going in this um, direction in through here. And then I'm gonna do tr attempt to do the one on the other side in a similar shape, but you might, oops, <laughs> it's gonna grow on me again. Um, you might find that because they're at different angles, you, you know, they might not be exactly the same shape. So again, just have fun with it. So this one I'm gonna have up um, in this direction a little bit, maybe coming down in through here. And again, you could always use your brush like as a measuring tool to see, okay, I did this one this tall, and then this one you want to you know, be pretty similar in height. So I think this one needs to come down a little bit, maybe a little bit higher up, and then just kind of curve it around like this. So just a long kind of curved oval type of shape is what I'm going for on mine. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna connect the two with a long arcing 
motion, but I want the um, the the curve to kind of meet a little bit farther down the the um, earpiece itself. So I'm going to just kind of mark myself so I have a um, an area that I'm shooting for because when I go to do this line I kind of want it to be fluid and continual and for me it works out better if I have a place that I'm shooting for so I just started them down a little bit from each one and now I'm just going to give it a continual curve I'm going to go about halfway up this area in through here so I'm just going to try and do a continual motion keeping my eye on the prize which is the other dot or the other marker so something like this and then once I have it on there then I can just kind of sit and adjust it as much as I want. I'm going to have the little pieces as they come into meet here. I'm going to make that a little bit wider so it looks like it's, um, I don't know, a more fancy connector piece. I did um, have a little boo-boo in through here which I will take care of um, with my background green after it dries so I knew that that would be kind of a little troublesome if I tried to correct it right now so I'm going to just let that dry and um, I'll correct it after my black paint dries so I can get a nice good coverage and again because I'm using a little bit of water on my brush I'm able to get these um, slender type of clean lines and I just kind of keep going back and forth until I've got the um, the edges the way that I want. I want it to be nice and thick um, down here like it is on the other side where it meets the the headphone piece. So I'm just going to widen that up a little bit and then I'm going to make a couple of bump out spots like I'm going to have a little one in through here like this is the uh, little adjuster piece. I'm going to have another one maybe in through here and you can make these whatever way that you want. You can make them resemble a pair of headphones that you have at your house or you know you used as a kid or something along that line. I'm going to have this little piece kind of sticking out in through here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some white paint on my dirty brush. This is I'm going to utilize this to give myself some kind of details to it. So I'm going to have like a, a highlighted area at the top portion of the um, head full the headset part in through here, the ear pieces. So again, black and white are on my brush right now, giving myself like a gray kind of area up at this top area. Now I'm going to use that same color combination. I'm going to put some little um, like. Um, wrinkles of sorts or bumps to show that maybe there's some um, some texture or the little leathery piece that kind of closes in towards that ear. So just these little gray lines will give the impression of something like that. I'm going to use the same color combination black and white on my brush at the same time to give myself a little highlight on the um, on the exterior piece. So I'm going kind of more towards the top of my black area and again right now I've got black and white on my brush to do this effect black and white I'm going to do the same thing here and here and now I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to put white paint on my brush so the the gray is was my first kind of highlight now I'm picking up just white paint and I'm going to give myself an even brighter highlight so it doesn't have to be at the edge you can just kind of swipe it wherever you feel um, makes sense. So something like that. I'm going to do whatever I do on one side. I'm going to go ahead and do on the other side. I'm going to do a little brightness at the tippy top of the this um, headpiece itself. So and if something goes wrong you can certainly just wait for it to dry a minute and add black back to it. So like that. Maybe I have a little tiny bit of the white. The white is just going to give you that extra little shine and make it look a little bit more realistic. So now I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put my little spiral cord on. So this is just going to be a freestyle. Think of the old telephone cords that were just like these um, rubbery kind of spirals. I'm going to start in through here and I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. I have watered down black paint on my brush and I'm going to do a continual type of spiral motion. So I'm going to start in through here and once I get going I'm just going to kind of spiral <laughs> it without giving too much thought. I like to kind of let my brush 
do its own thing. I need to reload and I'm kind of just spinning the tip of my brush so I can have this fun spiral motion. And it doesn't have to be symmetrical. You can have one area spin out a little bit less than another. I know that the cords in my house, depending on who has been caring for them, some are very well um, aged where the spirals look the same and others get all tangled up over time. I'm not quite sure how that happens, but it does. And, <laughs> and, the, and the spirals, do not uh, they end up being very um, inconsistent with, with each other. So you can have fun with that. Then once you've got the black on there, then we're going to go and quickly do a little highlight. So without washing my brush, I'm just picking up white paint. And what I do is I'm going to do a little swipe on the top side of each one of these curves. So depending on what handed you are, it might be easier to go swipe right or left, whatever um, works for you. I think swiping um, from the right to the left is going to work out for me. So I just take it at the top and I just swipe it down like this. You can reload whenever you need to. Some of them can be brighter than others. This is just allowing for this cord of sorts to look a little bit more three-dimensional and have um, a fun dimensional element to it. If you want it to be brighter, just pick up a little bit of white like we did on the headset and you can just pop in a little bright white spot and then we are going to actually be switching to our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your headphones done, you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the final fur. So what this is going to include is a little strip of the mane, and I'm going to put a couple of little pieces of fur um, crossing over in front of my headphones just to make give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to do the main first. I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna and brown on my brush at the same time. And what I'm doing is I'm going to take, I want my bristles to be kind of in control. So what I like to do is I take my brush and I kind of squish it on the side of my palette. That's going to bring my bristles together at the end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my brush, I'm going to ride it right along the edge of my body in through here, and then I'm going to pull up these little pieces of the mane, or pull out, out from the from the body, so something like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to do a, another little layer on them in a second to get the um, the top portion um, to have a little bit of highlight, just reloading my brush so I can get this little edge in through here. So when you get to the um, the bubble part, you might want to just slow down. <laughs> if you bump into the bubble and you get it, you know, these little hairs on top of it, that's okay. You can come back and just make a little correction on that bubble portion if you want. I did notice that the um, mains on, or at least the ones that I was looking at, on giraffes are pretty... They're not really long and they are pretty um, systematic with the length, so you don't really have to make them too long. Then what I'm going to do without washing my brush, I'm picking up some of my original tan color and I'm going to reverse the direction of my little spikes. So I'm just kind of taking it from the outside and pulling it in. So this way I've got kind of light pieces at the top and dark pieces down um, as it's meeting the body. And this gives me just a quick way to give a little bit of dimension on the um, the pieces of the mane. And uh, again, the manes can come in different colors. If you felt that you wanted a little bit more lightness or darkness, feel free to incorporate that. Then I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to put some little hairs on the um, up by the earphones. So just giving my brush a real good squeeze in my paper towel so there's not a lot of moisture on it. And then I'm going to take just a teeny tiny bit of white on the tip of my brush, wipe it off on the side of my palette so I really just have a tiny, tiny bit. And I'm going to go from the this little ear part and just bring a tiny bit of these pieces of fur right in front of my headphones. And if you do too much, you can always um, just reverse it with a little bit of black on that headphone. And then, or you could use a small brush too. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be utilizing this uh, your small brush for the next step. So you can put this brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be signing mine with my small brush and black paint. I'm gonna sign mine in the bottom left. I think I'm just gonna kinda of sign it right in here. <laughs> this little spot right in through here. You can sign yours wherever you want. I sign mine with my initials, but you could sign yours with your first name or the, a date or a symbol, whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you would like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really fun animal portrait, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.